Hi there. I'm here to talk to you about alcohols today. Um, we're going to talk about what do we do when we have an alcohol as a starting material, what are the types of reactions they can do, and how do we make that happen. Alcohols have one big rule, and there's kind of two applications of it. So we're going to talk about the big rule first, we'll look at the two applications, and then we'll look at a couple examples of those um, applications. All right, so the one big rule of alcohols. Alcohols must be activated before they react. Okay, that's the big rule. And there's two ways that we can react. We can do this. We've already seen one of them, right? And that was in the dehydration. So you can take alcohol plus acid and make a good leaving group. Or you can take alcohol plus base and make a good base. These are the two examples. So our big rule is alcohols must be activated before they react. And then we have two examples of how that happens. Either we react the alcohol with an acid or we react it with the base. So let's do an example of alcohol plus acid. We've seen this in dehydrations. So if we take, treat this with H2SO4, Right. We know that we're going to get the elimination product where we form a pi bond and create H2O, right? And we also know that this process goes through the addition of H plus to the acid or to the alcohol in order to make a good leaving group. And this is the general strategy. If we take an alcohol plus an acid, we want to make a good leaving group. So if we identify our reactant as an acid that's reacting with our alcohol, then we know that we're going to make a good leaving group. So for example, if I give you a tertiary alcohol and it reacts with HCl, we have an alcohol, we have an acid, we know that we're gonna react with the H plus and we're gonna make ourselves a good leaving group. And furthermore, we know that that leaving group, which is attached to a tertiary carbon, is going to leave because that's kind of what leaving groups do. Makes a tertiary carbocation, and as soon as we make a carbocation, we go to our list. What are the things that carbocations do? They can do SN1, they can do E1, they can rearrange. Right. This one's not going to rearrange because it's tertiary. In fact, this one is going to do an SN1 reaction. Right. So the chlorine adds in there, and we get an SN1 process. But wait, why did it not do E1? Well, the answer is that it did do E1. Right. And so if you want to have some fun mechanistically, which... I mean, we're all here, right? So if you want to have some fun, draw out the E1 product of that process and then think about what happens if you take that E1 product, that alkene, and react it with HCl. And what you'll find is, of course, that you get this same product all over again. Okay. So alcohol and acid, we can do things like SN1 reactions. We can replace alcohols with, al with alkyl halides. We can also choose, if we choose some kind of specific acids, we can do things like SN2 reactions. Right? So if I have an OH here and I react this with phosphorus tribromide, PBr3, what I'm going to get out is something that looks suspiciously like an SN2 reaction. Only notice that I'm not using the phosphorus as the nucleophile, right? The phosphorus isn't the thing that replaces the bromine. 
And so what's happening here is phosphorus tribromide is electronegative bromine surrounding an electropositive phosphorus, not very electronegative. And so the oxygen says, well, that's just like an acid. We're going to add electrons to that acid, and we're going to kick out this bromine. So we're actually going to do an SN2 reaction on phosphorus, kind of. And what have we done? We've reacted our base, our alcohol, with an acid, PBr3, and we've made a good leaving group. So this looks suspiciously like what we did with H+. Right? Alcohol plus acid makes a good leaving group. Alcohol plus acid makes a good leaving group. Alcohol plus a Lewis acid makes a good leaving group. So what happens when we make a good leaving group? Well, now we've got a good leaving group and we've got Br-, minus, which is a reasonably good enough nucleophile that it can come in and do an SN2 process, right? No carbocations here. We're just getting an SN2 where we invert the stereochemistry plus phosphorus attached to OH attached to Br attached to Br. But this is the thing that we're worried about. So, once again, right, PBR3, the takeaway here, we haven't seen PBR3 before, but it reacts like an acid and allows us to do SN2 reactions on secondary alcohols. Let's say that we don't want bromine for some reason, right? What if we want to replace our alcohol with a chlorine. Well, we can do that too. We just have to choose a different acid that has chlorines on it instead of bromines. And we use thionyl chloride, SOCl2. Thionyl chloride does Oops, there's no negative charge in that chlorine. Right. Thionyl chloride does the same thing. We have a positive sulfur here. So the oxygen adds in there, kicks out a chlorine. We react the oxygen with an acid and we get a good leaving group. Now this looks awful because we got too many charges around here. If you want to draw this as an expanded octet that has this, that's totally fine. But the point is, this whole thing is a good leaving group because we have this positively charged oxygen that's going to make a nice stable leaving group once it's left. And we do an SN2 reaction again and make the chloride, right? So thionyl chloride, PBR, excuse me, thionyl chloride, PBR3, both of these react like acids. React like acids to activate alcohols. They allow us to do SN2 reactions and replace OH with CL in the case of thionyl chloride, BR in the case of PBR3. This is a general strategy, right? Is alcohol plus acid gives us a good leaving group and then we do an SN2 reaction. So we'll see one more example of that, maybe a couple more, and, uh, and that'll finish it up for alcohols.